Hey kids, welcome to lesson 15, processing arrays, for loop. It's very common to want to repeat a set of commands a particular number of times. Recently, we have been using the while loop to do this by creating a counting variable, setting the Boolean expression, and incrementing the value of the counter by one each time. We've also used a for loop before, and we'll explain it more in depth now. The for loop was created to wrap all those components related to counting loops into a single line of code. Looks like we have a little example here. We have our counter that we usually create, i equals zero. Hmm, wonder why they use i. There's a Boolean condition that is our less than, greater than expressions. It is saying i is less than four. What's a Boolean expression again? It is just a logical statement. It is either true or false. It is either doing something or not doing something. And finally, we update our counter variable, i++. So that's adding to our counter here. This looks like our for loop broken down. So this is our old way we used to do a loop. We have a variable, i equal one, while i is less than four, we have a console.log statement, and then we're going to increase i1. Looks like this for statement really takes all those different components we've been using and puts it into one. Very useful, very nice, and something we're probably going to use an awful lot moving forward. Programmers would typically read a loop for variable i equals zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, out like this. For variable i, starting at zero, while i is less than 10, i plus plus, or increment i by one. Notice that in reading a for loop, we still use the word while. You may notice that when you drag a for loop out from the toolbox that we've set it up with you for i is a variable. Why is i a variable? Ooh, code's gonna tell us the answer to my question. Using a single character i as a variable in a for loop has become a convention in programming for a variety of reasons. One reason is that for loops are often used when processing arrays. You can think of i as shorthand for index. And honestly, that's how I think about it a lot. But there is no reason why you have to use i. If you don't want to use it, it's just a variable. That means if you'd like to use another letter, feel free to. Just remember, you're changing the letter up. We have a do this, drag out a for loop, insert a console.log statement inside the for loop that displays i. We have a little example down here. Looks like we have a for loop getting dragged out. Then we take a console.log statement, put it in there, and we are going to display i. That doesn't sound too bad. Let's drag out our for statement. Now we can go down to our variables and drag out a console statement. What do we want to display? We want to display information i, so I'm just going to put an i in there. And that should display whatever my variable i is. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Run. 0, 1, 2, 3. What is it displaying then? Well, it is displaying the number of loops. Remember, indexes start at zero. Zero, one, two, three is four times through the loop. What console.log is displaying when it displays i, it's simply just displaying the number of loops it's going through. Pretty interesting, it starts at zero. That is a pretty important fact. I am sure that's gonna be very important on the AP test that is coming up. Looking back up here, we dragged out the for loop, inserted a console.log statement inside the for loop that displays i. I think that's all code.org wanted from us. Let's go ahead and hit finish and see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.